So now we'll get to the point of how this relates to our course. So as with polar coordinates, we have a rectangular ordered pair AB. We can be represented in a polar coordinate, right? Where we have our radius R comma theta, the direction. Um, or, you know, theta also represents the angle between the positive axes and the segment. So we talked about that in our polar coordinates video. Um, now, we also talked about like, if you were going to, what do you know, create a right triangle, right? And you go ahead and you wanna represent this distance, right? Are you okay with the fact that it would equal, A would equal R times cosine theta? Just so you know where that's coming from, this is your R, this is your theta, okay? We're representing this as A, and we represent this as B. So just like your X and Y, we're just giving it new variables. And if I were gonna stand at theta, bringing us back to when we first met, cosine theta is A over R. So if you isolate that A, we get R times cosine theta. Well, now if you find sine of theta, that definition is opposite over hypotenuse. Isolate that B, you would multiply both sides by R. That's why we get B equals R times sine of theta. So what this gives us, okay, in terms of our complex numbers, is remember we have A plus BI is a complex number. Well, now we can rewrite this as R times cosine theta plus, well, now our B is R times sine theta. And then this is times that I. Now, because they both have R, I can go ahead and factor it out. And we'll put that I in front for notation purposes. And that brings us to our trig form of a complex number, which gives us more information. Because again, it's gonna give us that radius, it's gonna give us that direction, the angle it makes with the positive X axes. So it really gives us more information. Here is the formal definition of trig form. The thing you wanna pay attention to is this one is saying that theta is between zero to two pi. It could change it up on you and say it's also between zero and 360 degrees. So just pay attention to what the instructions are asking for. Uh, it just depends on what text we're using. So knowing this, okay, we're just gonna get uh, some practice writing between two different forms. Again, um, my job here is just to expose you to these complex numbers and complex planes, and you'll start to really use them in your future math courses. Okay, so knowing this, you have um, example three. You have this table here, and I'm giving you the rectangular form. So that first one is z equals one minus three i. You have this complex number in rectangular form, and let's just pull it all together like what we've talked about. So if I need a visual, I'm gonna go below this table, and I'm just gonna give myself a visual. You won't have to do this every single time. But if I plot one minus three i on the complex plane, this would be one, one, two, three. Here is that z, right? Well, what we want to find for trig form is we want to find the distance from the origin. All right, so that's known as our R. And then we also, what do you know, create a right triangle. We can find that that theta is a little too small for my liking, but it's right there. So we have information how to solve this from previous lessons. Well, I know this is one, and I know this distance is negative three. So to find R, well, what do you know? Pythagorean theorem. So one squared plus negative three 
squared equals r squared. So I have one plus nine equals r squared. So then r is root 10. I would leave it like that. Um, I can't break that up. If you can, you want to. And just again, want to pay attention to instructions. So they might say round to a certain decimal. They might say leave exact. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as root 10. So here's my trig form. We just did the work, we found r. Now we got to figure out theta. Well, it's just like previous lessons, especially those polar coordinates. I can find that theta. You can use any inverse trig, but like I say, I like to use inverse tangent because in case I got that r wrong, and that would be negative three over one. Well, that one's a little funky because that's not on my unit circle, where some of them will be, which is nice. The next two will be. So I have to rely on Desmos. So I'm going to go here. Now, because in this problem, we want our theta to be, theta to be between 0 and 2 pi, I'm going to make sure I'm in radians. But if the problem was in degrees, I'd make sure I'm in degrees. So I'm going to do inverse tangent of negative three, and you can do over one, but hope you're okay with it. You don't need to. <laughs> so I get negative 1.25 is what I'm going to round to. Here's the deal though. Again, just based on the instructions and how I defined it, I need theta to be between zero and two pi. So we've talked about this a lot and hopefully it's getting better. What our calculator is programmed to do is to only give us out inverse tangent that lives between here and here, because that's how it's defined to be a function. So my calculator is saying this angle from here to here is negative 1.25 radians. However, we want to find the angle from here to here, right? So we've done a lot of work on this. So to find that, we want to go ahead and add 2 pi. And that would give us our positive angle, right? Instead of that negative direction. So again, relying on my calculator, enter, I'm going to do answer plus 2 pi. So 5.03. So I'm going to say it one more time, pay attention to directions. It might be in degrees, so then you would add 360, and they might tell you to round differently. So I'm going to say Z. My trig form is my R, the distance from my um, origin, or my hypotenuse and my triangle, cosine. And actually, since I rounded, I'm going to use the approximately symbols, 5.03 plus I sine. 5.03. Now for the other two, we can just rely on our, cal um, our unit circle because now we're going to go from trig form to complex form. So what you're going to just do is just evaluate these. So what is cosine of 2 pi? Well, that's one. And what's sine of two pi? That's zero. So if you distribute that two, we'll get two plus zero i. You can write it like that. Or you also have the option just to write two. So that's actually showing us that every number in the world could be written as a complex number, because we could just say plus zero i. All right, so for the next one, I'm just gonna evaluate two. Well, cosine of two pi over three is one half plus i. Sine of two pi over three is root, whoops, root three over two. I distribute that two and I get one plus i root three. 
you can write that I after that radical. For me personally, I want to write it before. Um, it's just probably how I was taught, but either way is acceptable. If you do write it after, make sure your radical is clearly closed so it doesn't look like your I is underneath the radical. Okay, so again, this was just giving us practice to write between two different forms. 